Hey, Jason here from Theme Punch, and welcome to part two of the responsive series. So in part one, we discussed grid sizes as well as custom grid sizes and how they affect the responsive behavior for your slider. In this video, we're going to dive deeper into text layers and how custom grid sizes can be utilized to set up the perfect responsive text for our sliders. So continuing with part one, I went ahead and added a second text layer to the slider that we were working with. And I also added a background and some spacing to the text layer so we can see them better in this demonstration. And then I switched off these custom grid sizes here just for now, just so we can see how this text responds by default on the front end of our website. So let's take a look at that real quick. So here are two text layers with our slider. And if you remember, with the custom grid sizes turned off, this text here will just shrink as the slider shrinks. So as we shrink the window here, see the text will just keep getting smaller and smaller. And as we get down to mobile view, it's a little too small for readability. So we definitely want to turn those custom grid sizes back on and set up the text so it's much better for mobile viewing. So let's get started. So for demonstration purposes, I've gone ahead and set the width and the height for both of these text layers to auto. And as we can see for the first text layer, this is perfect. But for the second, the words bleed off the screen here. So to fix that, what we can do is we can set a fixed width for the second layer. So I'm going to enter in 1140. And then you can see the words are still bleeding off the screen. So I'm going to select the auto line break option. And now we have a perfectly sized text layer within our layers grid here. So this text is set up perfect for our desktop view. But we want to set up the text now for mobile devices. So to do that, over in our slider settings, we're going to turn back those custom grid sizes on. And then let's see how that text responds as we resize the slider again. So if you remember from part one, with the custom grid sizes turned on, the font size will essentially snap back to 100% when each breakpoint is reached. So as we resize the slider here, we can see it bounces back up as we reach those breakpoints. But one thing you may be noticing here is that although the first text layer looks good, the second text layer is bleeding off the screen. And the reason why is because we have a fixed width set for that second text layer of 1140 pixels. So obviously that's too large for the mobile views. So let's go ahead and set up this second text layer so it fits much better. So if we head back to the slide editor, now that we've enabled these custom grid sizes here, if we just reload the page, now we're going to have these mobile options toward the top right. And these mobile options, if you remember from part one, correspond directly to the grid sizes right here. So what we can do now is we can set up a new defined width for the second text layer for each of these different mobile views. So for the desktop view, the fixed width here was exactly 100 pixels less than the layers grid size of 1240. So I'm just going to follow the same format for the other layers grid sizes. So this is 1024 for the notebook. If we switch over to notebook, let's set this up to 924 and then for the tablet 778 switch over to the tablet 678 and then for mobile this is 480 so let's just make this 380 okay so let's go ahead and save the slide and see what this looks like on the front end now. So now you can see our text fits much better here. And let's just resize the slider all the way back up to desktop view. 
And so as we resize down, the text will resize down until that next breakpoint hits, and then it'll bounce back up to 100%. And there it is again. And there it is again. And as you can see, now that we've defined fixed widths for each of the different viewports, the text never bleeds off the screen. So now that the text is fitting perfectly inside our slider, the next thing I want to show you is how the text is aligned inside the slider. So you may have noticed that in desktop view, the layers here are further to the left of the slider than they are in the actual editor. In the editor, they're aligned to the left with a 50 pixel offset, but on the home page, you can see there's more space here. Well, the reason why is because currently the layers are aligned to the layers grid, which is defined right here. So we can change that to align them to the slider. But first, let's just take a look at a visual representation of this layers grid. So to do that, I'm just going to add a shape layer with full width and full height selected and set that to align left top. Save the slide here. And now as we reload the page here, we can see this is our layers grid right here. And the text captions actually are positioned 50 pixels to the left of the layers grid. So let's change them to be aligned to the slider instead of the layers grid. And to do that, let's just get rid of this shape layer here. You can select the layer and then click this behavior tab and then under align, we can change this from grid based to slide based. And we can do the same for the second layer as well. Save the slide. And now that we reload the slider here, these two captions are perfectly aligned to the left of the slider now. So now that our text is fitting perfectly inside the slider and also aligned perfectly to the slider, Let's take a look at some of the additional options that we can apply to these text layers as the screen resizes. So if you remember, we set a different width for the different viewports here. And in addition to setting a different width, we can also set a different position. So for the notebook here, let's just take this second text layer, head over to Style, and let's align it to the bottom of the slider instead of the top. And then let's set 50 pixel offset from the bottom. Save the slide. Reload the front end. And just watch closely as we resize the slider and we hit that first break point. The second layer there is going to be repositioned to the bottom of the slider. Here we go. So this really opens up a lot of opportunity for changing the view of our slider based on the different screen sizes. So for example, maybe the text looks better here on a tablet than it does on a desktop computer. And maybe on mobile view, the text would look good in the center of the slider. And in addition to position, we can also adjust things like font size and font color. So let's just head back to a slide editor here. And for the notebook view, I'm just going to change the color here to red. And then I'm also going to apply a font size of maybe 36 with a line height of 48. And let's just save that and reload the slider here on the front end. And here you can see we have red text with a larger font size but this is only for the notebook view. So if we resize back up to desktop, it's normal again. And then here's our notebook view with the increased font size and the red color. And then once we hit tablet, then we get whatever we've set for the tablet view. And we can also toggle a layer's visibility based on the device size. So for example, let's say that we wanted text only for the desktop view and for the tablet view and for the mobile view. But for the notebook view, maybe we just want this caption here 
and maybe we don't want this text at all. So if we head over to the slide editor, in the visibility tab, you'll see we have these four device options. So I can select the layer here, and I can go ahead and switch it off for the notebook view. And now this layer is only going to show up on desktop, tablet, and mobile. So if we save the slide, reload the page here, we can see that layer is now gone. And it's back again for the desktop view. And it's back again for tablet and mobile views. But for our notebook view, we've effectively hidden it. And with the device visibility options, we can introduce new content maybe only for the notebook viewport. So let's head back to the slider here. And let's just go ahead and duplicate this layer and just reposition it so we can see it in the center here. And then I'm going to switch off for desktop, tablet, and mobile. And now this duplicated layer is only going to show up for the notebook view. So let's save the slide, reload the page here. Here you see we have our second layer. And as we switch back to desktop view, we have our original text captions. As we hit the notebook view, we have a second new layer that we've introduced. And for tablet and mobile, we have our normal text captions again. So you can see this really allows you to set up your sliders with not only whatever content you want, but position them perfectly inside the slider, resize them perfectly inside the slider, with all the different options available with Slider Revolution. So thanks for watching.